You're welcome. Ooh, wow. Thank you. Okay, so, um, <laughs> tell you what we're going to do. Yeah? There's two floors of museum. There's basically three rooms of Stone Age that way, between about a million year old material. I know some people believe the world is 6,000 years old now, but we're not operating on, on, that, on that idea. Excellent. Uh, there's a million year old material by early hominids, all sorts of tools and things, right through to about 6,000 years old, which is the end of the Stone Age, about the time of Stonehenge and Newgrange. The biggest feckin' woolly mammoth head in the world is in there with the <laughs> tusks, which was pulled out of a fishing net by accident in 1999. The fisherman is still in therapy. <laughs> but better. Uh, this just arrived a couple weeks ago. Wouldn't you like to have a giant cave bear skeleton in your Yay! lobby? Yes. That's uh, about 40,000 years old. That came out of a cave in Romania. My crazy friends in uh, Holland, these are the guys who put the mammoth back together after it came out of the fishing net. They bought him out in Romania, which was full of caves, and they dug out all the cave bears and then sold them out. And then they took all the bones back to Holland and uh, <laughs> turned them into cave bears. So, um, I'm, uh, I just walked in the door. I'm going to be with you in a second. This is all uh, gift shop and antiques and stuff back here. And all my incredible CDs are there. And then upstairs <laughs> is Bronze Age and Celtic and Roman and Viking and Saxon weapons and jewelry. And stuff. There was not one decent cup of coffee on the entire planet. <laughs> no wonder they died out. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was tough, and they were tough. So this is the woolly mammoth that came out of the fishing net in 99. Uh, out of the North Sea. I had a very good uh, comment from an American recently. He said that, um, that the, the head came out of a fishing net. He goes, out of a fishing net? Was it still alive? <laughs> I said, yeah, the 40,000-year-old decapitated mammoth skull is still kicking. Still kicking. Yeah. Still anyway, alive. it wasn't alive. It wasn't even in particularly good shape. It's been restored a bit, but it's, it's about 90% original. Uh, the North Sea, where it came out of, there's one spot where every time the boats go over, they find stuff, which is good because there's no fish left. They find a lot of mammoth uh, molars, they find all sorts of Ice Age mammal bones. They, uh, there's actually whole human towns down there from about 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, 30,000 years ago, which is quite incredible because they're a perfect, you know, archaeological human sites in the middle of the North Sea. Uh, all the water levels rose at the end of the Ice Age when the glaciers melted. So the North Sea rose about 300 feet. It's still very shallow. Uh, in those days, you could walk from Ireland to France, you could walk to Denmark. So uh, the woolly mammoths used to migrate into Ireland via uh, that North Sea, which was not a sea. So, biggest animal ever lived in Ireland. Um, and uh, let's see, I want to show you Stone Age, some of these. Uh, they keep pushing the dates back. I have to change all the text in this room because everything they taught us has um, been changed in the last year. They, f they uh, previously thought that their earliest humans in, uh, in Europe, or proto-humans, was about 800,000 years ago. They've been working on a big site in the north of Spain called Atapuercas, and they found a jawbone which they put through like five different atomic molecular tests of different descriptions. They all came out at 1.2 million and it turns out there's a whole other ancestor in Europe different from Africa and in Asia. So now it's some, somebody called Homo ergaster and then you've got Homo heidelbergensis and you've got the whole new lineage and a much older European than, than we did a few months ago. So anyway, these are the basic Swiss Army knife of the old Stone Age. They're called hand axes. Uh, because they go in your hand and they're for butchering and skinning and probably digging and just about everything else. Um, they were in vogue for at least a million years. They didn't change much. Didn't seem like anybody had any like really bright ideas. And then suddenly around 35,000 years ago, things started to pick up. Uh, people have suggested there was some sort of mutation or 
you know, some quantum leap in cognitive evolution. Anyway, suddenly the toolkit becomes very diverse, very specialized. People start painting masterpieces in caves in Europe. It's like practically overnight. It's really weird. This, a lot this, of people, yeah. Sorry, this yeah. Um, we and our ancestors spent well over a million years hunting and gathering and being nomadic. And it's only in the last six or seven thousand that we've settled down and done this kind of domestic domestic scene with the with the mortgages and the divorces and the beer and all that stuff is like so recent. Nobody's really adjusted to it, let alone living in a huge city with millions of people. People didn't even live in villages. I mean, you know, there were small hunting bands for millions of years and they figured out how to domesticate plants and animals six to ten thousand years ago. Um, everything speeds up then because you can have some people out there working and then the rest of them are doing other things, becoming priests, astronomers, specialists. You can stockpile food so you can, everybody can now work for months at a time. And that's when knowledge and uh, communications and trade start taking off. And everything gets all pear-shaped uh, and interesting. Uh, about 6,000 years ago. You got the first ceramics in there, all sorts of goddess figurines, which are... First room is basically farm tools. It's kind of like if you ever saw the movie The Field about Ireland, same deal. You had this period where everybody was farming and selling down, it was groovy. And they started separate, dividing land for their children and dividing and dividing until there, until there wasn't enough. And that's when, that's the period in the next room, it's all weapons. And then you got guys coming in on horseback from the east and taking everything, the food, the women. That never, ever went back to the way it was from about that time. That's about 2500 BC. And you get into the Bronze Age, it's even more weapons and more armor and all that stuff. It all starts speeding up about four and a half thousand years ago. So you can walk in there and take a look around at some of the stuff. If you have any questions about any stuff, yeah. Indus culture from India. Those are about mm, 4,000 BC ish. And this lovely mound of Venus here, that's Yugoslavian or Serbian, also, or is all about 6,000 years old. And these are from Tel Halaf in Syria, all, or all Central Europe in the back. These kind of duck headed guys standing near these goddesses, those are more like Bronze Age than those are Syrian. Mm. That's probably an early form of Astart. Again, Serbia, somewhere in there. It's a lot like the Cycladic figures from Greece, which is also doubles as armor. Basically, there's still very much in the Stone Age, people are relying on stone tools, but they've just discovered that you can make tools out of pure copper. Most of this is from the Carpathian Mountains in Transylvania. It was exported to Hungary and manufactured in Hungary. A lot of it's probably just used for trade, like money. I mean, something that big and heavy would have been worth, you know, a lot of horses. So um, it's also really shitty stuff for, for working with. It's too soft. It's not like bronze. Bronze is actually pretty good for, it keeps an edge.